Hey, hi, Sydney. Fancy meeting you here. Yes, hello, hello. <laughs> Boy, we got a heck of a show. And a surprise dog did show up, didn't they? Yes, that's how we like it. We like surprises. That's right. Well, we got a, we got a big show today, too. This is going to be cool. And, um, um, well, let's get, let's get going. I don't want, uh, I don't want our, our guest co-host to, to have to hang on to a puppy too long. Do you? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. You remember that setup we did just for this? We kind of screwed it all up, but we're going to try it. All right. Yep. See. Hi, Julie. Hello. Hi, Julie. Hi. Here's my guest Who do you... puppy. That's Horton Velma, her... huh? Uh... Velma wearing her GPRS bandanas, oh, which we do right. offer for sale. And who's that over your shoulder? That is Moose. That is uh, one of my foster fails from uh, Alaska Animal Rescue Friends when I foster, fostered for them up in Alaska. How old is Miss Wiggle Worm? Wiggle Worm is uh, five months. She, uh, she's been in the Pacific Northwest now a week and a half and, uh, she's doing great. She, uh, she integrated well with my pack, sorry, pack of, uh, I got everybody in here with me, my pack of uh, misfit dogs, as you can see. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, she's just been a joy. Good, cool. Is she <laughs> available yet? Treats. That's what brings everybody. She is available for adoption. She uh, she's house broke, uh, like it's along with other dogs. Um, she will sleep in a crate, but she's been sleeping with the other dogs um, through the night. If she has to go outside, she will um, go to the door. Uh, um, walks great on a leash. Uh, rides well in a car. Wow. I don't know what am I missing. Wow. She's a good. Girl. She's a really. She's just been a joy. Yeah. It sounds Pretty. like she came to you that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, she, they listed her as bossy, but I wouldn't call her that at all. I would call her confident. Um, she, she doesn't try to be the boss. She, uh, she's learned her place in the pack and uh, she, uh, you know, she's submissive to my other dogs. They uh, teach her boundaries, which she's being, uh, really quite respectful of um, wow. her, probably her biggest, uh, she is, um, as you can tell, she loves very food motivated. Um, in fact, to the point where um, I have to make sure all dog bags of food are closed or else she'll, she'll feed out of them like a feeding trough. <laughs> so yeah. That's well, the only right. thing yeah. is uh, she likes to eat. Well, just like a puppy. Don't she probably know, likes food too. Anyway, too just like, <laughs> yeah, she's quite a smuggler and uh, just been a joy. Uh, doesn't mind the rain of the Pacific Northwest, and uh, she's done really well. She'll make somebody a great right. second dog. Um, she's got some mild, mild food aggression and um, long-lasting, high-value treats, but that's about it. Okay. Otherwise, she well, eats with the rest of the pack, and she, um, she's great. Well, here, let me do you a She'll favor. Grumble a little, Velma. If, Velma, if you uh, yeah. eat the high value, long term treat in your crate, then you'll get them again. How about that? We do that. So, yes, yeah, right. so we do. Looks that. like she's about kind of a medium. Looks like she's Yeah, she's right. She's right. She's not got the. Um, you know, that like double coat, um, like some of them, it's getting longer. It's uh, real shiny. And uh, she, uh, um, she's pretty. I mean, you know, she's a really yeah. pretty girl. All white, well, single so, uh, claws. And she's not double coated. Oh, yeah. no, I, I think she might. Yeah, I think it's not as thick as some of the other ones. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. There you have right. it, Great British Rescue right. Society dot org. She does That's another. Cute, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she does another cute thing. Is like when she's sleeping, she'll sleep with her tongue out. It's oh. really cute. She's got that Marima smile, uh, that natural smile. But that's not a Marima. Yeah. 
she is sweet. Yeah, she's yeah, a good girl. All right. I don't know. She wow. has a brother that's up here also that's available for adoption. I'm sorry? Well, thanks for having us. I said thanks I for having us on today. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you're kind of co-host here. No, you kind I of said thanks for lunch. having us on today. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for coming. We're going to fix yeah, your she's internet not camera before next week. Okay, sorry. Wow. Um, Julie lives out in the middle of nowhere where, well, the humans don't even need services, it looks like. All right. She, she's worse than the cornfields. So uh, let me bring some comments yeah. up here. And um, I know. Uh, hi, Rena. And um, yeah, yeah uh, Rena's hi, here. Rena. Rena does a little bit behind the scenes uh, with the show. So she's uh, she's a trooper, too. And, um, yeah, Rena states that she's so calm. You guys, you know, Moose is laid back, too. And why is he still yes. available? Or did he get adopted? Not yet. Not yet. But no, not yet. But There's a few of them I can't figure out why they're not adopted. Um, anyway. We, so, but, you know, several of our guests that, that have been on the show lately have been adopted. So that's the mm -hmm. good news. So Robbie, well, who's yeah. on, um, Daisy, too, um, Marjorie, um, Pony got adopted, um, Evelyn, some of the dogs that were and featured. Coltrane. Yeah, and Coltrane. Yeah, Coltrane, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Showtrot. Yes. Yeah. got a double. But I tell yeah. you, I I, uh, I invited Julio it's back on. Remember when we had Daisy and Julio, and um, they took him out hiking, and oh, um, yeah. and I saw he just did something for me. Okay, um, we got to get him adopted so I don't try, because uh, you know after forty eight years of marriage, I really miss her when she's gone. You know, <laughs> if I bring a dog home. <laughs> yeah. But um, wow, right. Julie, thanks for bringing her on here. Uh, and I know you got things to do, but I'm going to ask you anyway. You want to stay up, watch the rest of the show, or you got to go? Yeah, of course we'll be here to watch the show. We love watch, okay. looking at the dogs. All right. Thank well, you. then we're going to – we have we have one foster with three dogs. Okay. Um, but first, I just want to uh, just give a, a little bitty shout-out to, um, to the Peer Rescue and Sanctuary in Colorado. They um they lost their Nala or Nalia. It's got one of them little funny signs over the um thingy. And um I made them this little tribute to her, but I just sent it to Judy. I thought I'd give you a picture of what she looked like. She was a fixture down there in Colorado now. And um and they're struggling. But the biggest part is their male peer is struggling. So keep them in your thoughts and they sure would appreciate that. Or maybe if you adopt a dog. You can do it in memory of Nalia. There you go. So anyway, um, Colorado Peer Rescue is one of the one of the sponsors of the show, one of the four rescues. So they they keep us going. So anyway, now we got three more dogs coming up here. And um, sorry, um, Julie. So well, there's a video for for all three of them, kind of, and we'll just play it. We'll get them up here and. And, well, we'll throw them to the wolves. How's that? <laughs>
I love having good looking dogs on. You know what? Hi, hey. Bradford. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Well, you got three of them, huh? I sure do. Got Sassy right next to me, cozy up on the sofa. I'm going to flip the camera around so I can okay. show you. Okay. Yeah. Um, boy, that, those dogs, some good looking dogs, but boy, they've, there's been one heck of a transformation there. So, um, uh, and I think, um, I think you're, uh, one of their second foster, aren't you, Bradford? I, I know that for a fact. I don't know if there's a, 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 you know, one prior to the last one. Cause the last gentleman, from what I understand, we had them for a year. Okay. All right. So and now, uh, which, which ones are the bonded pair? This is Sassy right here. Here's the female. And then we have Mr. Odin down here. Boy, they're really uh, energetic. Uh, <laughs> I've seen little... otherwise. Okay, I've witnessed it. Yeah, well, um, they were a little active today. There were some neighbor dogs going on. Yeah. Now, um, uh, I guess I'm going to ask you a couple questions, and then we can go into each dog individually. What do you think? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. That, All right. That... Right, um, yeah. I guess the standard stuff, the video mentioned that Sassy uh, likes cats the wrong way. Oh, no, cats. No, cats are a no-go. <laughs> okay. Cat-free home. Actually, that, that'll save the adopter on, on food. All right. right. Now, uh, what about fencing? Um, they should, whoever it is, the forever family should have at least a six foot or taller. Cause they okay, will because they will just fence. Because Dino... This Five foot right. fence is just like no fence, right? Pretty much. He has no <laughs> problem. He's the instigator. Come here, buddy. Um, if somebody wants to make a super dog cape and um, and send it to Dino, he'll be happy to wear it because he uh, he um, makes short work of that five foot fence because he gets a running start. So that means we can't put a small. Uh, there's stuff we can do. If you have cool. a uh, coyote rollers would definitely uh, help him out. Six foot privacy fence would probably be sufficient because he would, he can't jump that high. So, um, and then we lost Bradford. That's okay. I witnessed it um, in one of the videos in there. Um, that's when Dino went over it was yesterday when we were doing this practice. And it was because I'm witnessing the fence and I'm witnessing this. And I said, geez, wow. What a dog. My and bad. there he is. There's Mr. What a dog. <laughs> My bad. Wow. I'm now that's get... Dino, right? This is Dino. They're all very chilled right now. They had one of their twi treats earlier, that one of their favorites. And who's that? This is Sassy. That There's... one's Sassy. Uh huh. And then I'm going to scan over here, and here's, here's Huey. He's just chilling over here. Boy. But that doesn't happen. I'll let that tail go when dad approaches. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Now he's the one that will. Who's the biggest cuddle bug in case somebody's looking for a cuddle bug? This one right here will just jump right in there and just lay his head right across your neck or your belly. I mean, even last night he put his head on the pillow right next to me, but then he had to reach out his paw to put it on my shoulder like he was hugging me through the evening. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was adorable. He, wow. They kind of have their little... I, it, it's not a dispute. It's like whoever gets there first. All right. But, I didn't, I, but didn't I see um, Mr. Uh, Dino snuggling with you and then Sassy came up and everybody was very polite? Every one of them did. They know. Let, let's see. I'm pushing buttons here. Sorry, guys. Oh, we still see you. Okay. Um, no, it, it, it doesn't matter who's there. I mean, even like last night when. Um, Huey was with me. Uh, Dino got onto the bed for a while. Wow. Huey's wow. the only one. Well, no, she will sleep through the whole night as well. Okay. But they're very, they're all snuggly. She was the one that after I was having had her for a month with how she just wrapped herself around me on this sofa. Wow. And how big are they? It's hard to tell on, on camera. Are they pretty um, good size? Well, last time I had him weigh, he was 115. They came, okay. they, he was like, they were like 60 pounds when I first got him. Wow. And then we got him up to 90. Wow. And I haven't weighed him lately, but Huey himself, I mean, you can tell by the photographs. Yeah. yeah. Really now, from what I understand, uh, you didn't have Huey then, but you took that picture. Is that correct? 
No, 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 that's not correct. The oh. right when they right when they first um, I, I captured him from uh, on the street, that's the oh. picture that they took at the first shelter that he stayed at. Oh, gosh. And they kept and they kept him there for a few weeks because he was also his immune system was compromised. Wow. Huh. And look so, at him now. Uh huh. That and I'm working on a repat a new patio, and this is his favorite place to get all three of them, where they can just get wow. down there and just dig in the dirt. Oh, look at the end of his tail. He uh -huh. may, he may have a little bit of akbash in him there, maybe. You had mentioned that, yeah. I, once I I started looking at that up and seeing about the difference in the characters or their yeah. color. Oh, and he's he does, mixed. And he does have that bend. Yeah. I, he goes outside in the back pad, I mean the backyard, and when, the, Sorry. when that happens, <laughs> I I can mute you, Julie. Thank you. And he had he could care less that there was a dog at the other side of the fence barking at him. And I'm also they heard Julie's dogs bark, and they're still quiet. Well, here's one got up oh, a little bit. Oh, there we go. There's Dino, right? Dino. Okay. Okay, Sydney, do you have any uh anything? Um I'm gonna let you take this over because sometimes you just can't shut me up. <laughs> so, You're talking Huey, I mean, all three of these dogs have had right, a dramatic change in in um their physicality. So Huey, um, he was incredibly emaciated. Um, and he looks wonderful. Uh, yeah. They all are. Even when I got the first bonded pair, yeah. they were they were incredibly skinny as well. They had no fat between the fur and the skin line in the rib cage. I think I have pictures of all that. Yeah. yeah so they were pretty, and they shaved Dino because he was so matted. <laughs> okay, now we're going to get start some action going. <laughs> So how old is Huey right now? Um, they're saying two years. Oh, okay. I don't know, I, but I can tell he's the puppy. Okay. He's got the character. Well, two years is a puppy, and, and they yeah, see yeah, something yeah. out the window. So he's going to need a, a canine friend to play with. Oh, because him and Sassy have paired off big oh. time in playing. <laughs> they, they love to play together. Yeah, he he's a big boy. So how big do you think he is now? He's almost as big as uh, uh, Dino. Okay. I mean, it's, it's Dino's got all Dino's got the heavy fur. Huh. Well, I tell you, he's uh, that's a good looking dog now. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, has he interacted with kids at all? Have you seen that? Not that I've seen, but I have had some company that came over the other day, and he is very uh, cautious. Let's put it suspicious. That way. How about suspicious? Yeah, I would say so because he's had some events, something you know, people chasing him off or yeah, you know, not being loving to him. Yeah. And he's a guardian breed. He's bred to be uh, suspicious of strangers. But and what's so interesting, he's usually not the barker of the, all three. These other two are so worn out because they were having a fit because they couldn't get in the backyard when the other dog was barking at, at Huey, and Huey didn't didn't care. You see that picture, Bradford? I photoshopped the leash out of it. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> I had some fun. Yeah, he now, looks great. Um, and it, this is my first time fostering, and I have to say, these three have been really, <laughs> they're amazing dogs. Um, how has your experience with the rescue been so far? Oh, it's very good. Very good. good. You know, no, I, didn't I, know what to, I didn't know what to expect at first. Um, and like I said, when I first got these guys, they stayed in. And, you know, they were new, sniffing around and all that. But in the morning, I let them out, brushed my teeth, and I went back out there. They were gone. This was my first experience to think, well, I just flunked being a foster parent <laughs> because they, they had jumped that fence. But I, when I went out to go look for them, when I first went out, there she was just walking around the fence line, coming back towards me. <laughs> and then you put Dino in. He put him in one gate, goes over the other. <laughs> you know, what was really funny is she started coming towards me, and she got, of course, like 
four feet from me and changed her mind said, Nope, I'm not ready. I'm going back. And so I went through the house to cut them off through the property line. And as I'm walking the direction, I think she's running through my left peripheral vision. They're both now in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was, so I was thinking they're playing tricks on me. Nancy wants to know everybody's ages. They're saying six and a half for the bonded pair. And basically like two and a half for Huey. Okay. And Liz, and, um, Liz, thanks you for fostering these guys, Bradford. Well, I thank you. It's been and, my pleasure. And I, as I mentioned to you, I was very surprised when I told people that I'm doing this. Is the the thank yous I get and gratifying, and it's just very, it's very, it was unexpected well, that way. Yeah, as you go along, uh, you'll see how many lives you're capable of saving. Yeah. Well, and that's what I say. I, you know, I'm curious what the next character will be. <laughs> well, you never know, okay? The rescue never knows. Well, that's what I say, and I don't ever know. I keep on sitting there going, no, I'm not keeping anybody. <laughs> yeah. They are all very, I mean, non-aggressive. She's more the alpha of the group, as known females are for the peer. And she'll be the first one to go out to let everybody know that, you know, she's she's out there. And that's Boy, her big thing. Look at her. Do you have any questions for him, Julie? No, they're beautiful dogs, and what a transformation. Thank you. I, they really are. I, I think that, I mean, said this he last was week, so, um, the, to foster. And he was so funny how they shaved him down in that first picture yeah. that you have of him. And when they were first starting to want to put the foster pictures out or do this, I said, please, just wait till his mane started coming in. Because look at the difference. <laughs> he didn't look very skinny there. I, I don't see any ribs. Yeah, he, they were. I mean, when I when I put, ran my hands over them, I could I could just fill the rib cages without any, you know, like right. meat in between. Well, just because I can't see him, he could be at, at an angle there too. Right. All right. Um, okay. Wow. I mean, what a it's difference. A, yeah, Bradford. How long have you had Dino and Sassy? A little over six months now. Okay, so you know him really well. Uh huh. Nice. <laughs> and um, Dino, I mean, if Sassy wants to put him in his place, he just he just, he knows what he just doesn't move. He keeps his head down and just like you know, okay, whatever. And they say they're siblings. Oh, really? That's, yeah, that's what they said okay. to me. And that's not unusual for litter mates to become a very strong bonded pair well and too what i was curious about and no one had an answer because there's no history of her but, but with her nipple sides i believe she would have had a litter that wouldn't be unusual either would it yeah i mean i, I but thought i would thought not mm -hmm. either there for a while every female dog gprs took in had puppies yeah. Right, I'm going to be out there some other now. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. So uh, right now we've got Huey's banner scrolling across the bottom. That's what's been scrolling. We're going to move that up to uh, we did uh, Sassy's. That's an interesting way to spell Sassy's name. Now, you don't call them uh, no. uh, Sassy and Dino, do you? No, not at all. That's well, why What's, it's been, what's your been nickname? Trying, I've been catching myself because when I first got them, they never – answer to that they never moved they never reacted they never responded to those names uh -huh. so i've named him odin and she's she's sadie so she and i didn't know that sadie meant princess but yeah she is the princess oh you looked it up cool yes sir um me i never look it up because quite frankly well i give a dog a name because i like it yeah well that, i didn't that. Someone had said that, and they said also her name meant Sarah, and both of those things because I had a border collie I rescued years ago, and I had named her Sarah, and I did not name her Sadie because of that. Wow! I didn't know I didn't know the two meant the same. Wow! They uh, so really they haven't been a uh, other than uh, um, the fence. Uh, they haven't been a big problem, have they? No, not at all. Not at all. You know, because I have to tether the two 
So I tell the, the three went so I can get Huey out there with them. I wish I could show this. I don't know how I can, but I've stepped off the sofa and she's already calling me back with her paw. <laughs> Turn the phone around. You can show us. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're plugged in, are you? No, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm watching it. I did. I flipped it. Of course, now I do that. Is that, <laughs> is that Huey again? No, that's Huey. Well, sorry. See, I'm not, I'm new to all this stuff. So <laughs> I don't know where she went now. There she <laughs> is. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's Ooh, sassy yeah. there, right? Right here on the sofa. Yeah. I can't see. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. You're the phone background. I'm gonna flip it. <laughs> no offense. We want to see them. Yeah. So uh, that's no, cool. and I want you to see them. I don't want to. <laughs> you know, you promised me it was about. <laughs> I was like, no, don't put me in this. <laughs> so Bradford, um, Bradford, do you take them all for a walk together? I have not taken all three of them as a walk because the two were difficult to do at the same time. Okay. But the individually, and he's Huey's next. I just been busy with them and life in general, and just they have their. It's amazing what Huey and Sadie or Sassy, how well they play together. Oh. Because you know I have to, you know I'll let them out to go potty. And he's already potty because he'll he'll make he'll make himself known to the back door where he can go out. So and, he doesn't make a bee line to go over every time you let him out. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, who? Um, uh, Huey? Yeah. No, Dino. Yeah, uh, uh, Dino, to, to say that again. So he doesn't every time you let him out, he doesn't go and jump over the fence. Not every time. Is that is that correct? Oh no! Well, I can't say that because I don't. I, they were doing it all the time. At okay. well, I take that back because at first it got to the point where I would let them out right before we were going to bedtime. So they kind of got on the clocks. This was we're, we're heading to bed. This is the last party of the night, and they wouldn't jump the fence. Okay. But then it became and it never stopped. Gotcha. Because they taught themselves. Uh, uh, maybe one of these days uh, after the show, um, maybe we can see if we can figure something out. But, you know, you, I, this is management right now. Uh -huh. but, um, girl. Oh, gosh, she's gorgeous. Isn't she? I mean, I just want to get her look, so her little pouty face. Oh, and, yeah, she's beautiful. Let me get her banner up here. There that's is. what I do say. I do say she's the, she's the princess. Wow. Uh, great period of rescue society.org. This is where you find sassy. Now their bios aren't quite up there yet, but they got pictures up there, but who needs pictures when you got this and the rerun, you know, we always leave the recordings up. And it's Boy, amazing she, really too, how much they, they do get their energy out. They, I mean, they will. That's why I, I pushed the furniture away so much in the living room to give them this whole space to do their thing. <laughs> will they also play with you? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. The, Huey's more cautious. It's, he'll start, but then he won't understand. Meaning, then because if my hands start to move, he starts to get too cautious, like I'm coming to attack. Uh, yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to. Does, uh, does Huey play with toys at all? Oh yeah. Okay. They all got. Um, well. Of course, some of the pictures you have are them for Christmas, but they have a little tool bo toy box that we have. This is what they haven't learned how to play with. And I can't wait. This big tug of war. Because they play tug of war with that little monkey. Oh. <laughs> this little guy they do. I don't know if we can see it very well. But their favorite treat and toy? Cardboard. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, seriously, the cardboard, it's hilarious how this one and sassy will tug on just the the board the cardboard <laughs> so, so basically they tug with themselves so i'm in my chair now so this is basically my life with these three that looks like a pretty good life yeah, what do your very, uh, what do your common. dogs like to watch on television um they they don't care for, they, they, the, if they hear the barking that gets them going imagine that um, but yeah they don't really pay attention that much. Are these so, your first Great Pyrenees? No, sir. I had a gold. Uh, he's been gone now for two years, but I had him for 15. Wow. So 
quite a while back, but yeah, mm -hmm. he was my first experience. We have a question. Nancy wants to know uh, if they're good with kids. Um, I don't know because there's no children around the neighborhood. Because dogs ran them off, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no. it's, it's kind of a, it's not necessarily retirement, but three of the main houses and even two across the street that they just finished building are bed and breakfasts because we're on the lake. Okay. So Julie and Sydney, my guess would be because of their size, probably uh, the screeners would probably want to have older children with them. Is that correct? Yeah, typically um, we recommend, you know, teens, um, it, you know, um, but it, it depends, like, especially if, if we don't know if they've been around kids mm -hmm. before, if we don't know if they've been exposed. Yeah, we, we recommend that they go to homes with kids that are 15 years and older, just because they're sturdy. I'm going to follow this other one and see if he went to where I think he's going to. Is he going to get uh, be mischievous? Well, you can see. see what it, uh, well, it look at Dino's tail. My yeah, goodness. It is it's beautiful. So beautiful. I, mean, I had to make sure he got a brush in on that today. I think like, Dino, <laughs> the, I think all three of these. And that brings up a question. What happens if somebody doesn't want a bond pair and they want triplets? Is that even possible? I don't know. I've never to adopt three dogs at once. Three, those three. It, it, could they do that if uh, if they had the opportunity? Yeah, I'm not sure. We um, we would have to probably um, talk with our director and about they that. They would have to pry them out of her cold dead hands too. Yeah. I, I get that. But you know, we have we have people who adopt oh. bonded pairs, or they will adopt two dogs at a time. Mm -hmm. um, we, I actually had the privilege of getting a father daughter adopted together. They were at the same foster mm -hmm. home. The, um, the adopters were first interested in the dad and then they started talk, they talked to the foster and realized that the, the fosters were fostering two dogs of what we thought was a father and daughter. And they just fell in love with the, the dog's personalities that they heard about and their story. Mm -hmm. And they adopted both of them. So we certainly, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we get super excited when there's that kind of that happy surprise where it works out to adopt two dogs at once, whether they're bonded or not. Right. Uh, yeah. It just is a really special experience. Yeah. But um over in the past, uh, just over the years, uh, many of the bonded pairs, uh, well, not many, some of the bonded pairs can be easier than one single dog. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they can be double trouble too. All right. <laughs> it, uh, this one, he's, he's, I want to say he's the lover. He's the. Do you know? Yeah. I mean, Huey is kind of the cute young one. That I love the, Huey's name. You know, and but this one, he just, I don't wow. know. Uh, he's just so. And <laughs> Huey snores, which I think is hilarious. Cute. And he's like, and it's, 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 he's like a kid. He can fall asleep in, in a heartbeat. <laughs> wow. Well, that's amazing. I would have thought, uh, by Bradford, I would have thought, <laughs> he'll be back. I would have thought that um, the love bug was, I, well, I actually thought the love bug was uh, sassy. Yeah. Um, but when I talked to him yesterday, when we did our practice run here, um, um, uh, Dino was laying on the couch with him. She went up there. He politely got up, moved over and let her in. Aww. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. But it's a bonded pair. Okay. It's, um, um, yeah, I agree with Liz. He's got the prime spot. He may have fallen asleep down there too. Probably. Might, might be a short show. Got another, got another dog, Julie? Uh, um, no, I've got uh, prior foster foils, but that's about it. Yeah. Aren't, you, aren't you out of fosters, uh, Sydney? Um, right. I don't have one right now. My foster mom got adopted. Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. She just got adopted. Um, oh, within the last couple of weeks. And then, um, I had a very short term foster of a dog who was already adopted, but, um, was just waiting for a ride home to their new home. So I had her, um, for a few days, her name was Lottie and she was a 
doll. So wow. um, that that helped because um, I, I, I loved, I had my last foster for a couple months and you really get Marjorie, it. right? Yeah, Marjorie and you love them. And um, it's it's hard to say goodbye. Um, you've been doing but, this quite a while, haven't you? Yeah, um, a couple years. So okay. we have a lot of fosters who have yeah. a significant fostering experience. Uh, I've, um, I've had a lot of fosters and it, it I mean, some of them is good riddance and he does better over there because the dynamic, I had, maybe I had too many dogs. I don't know. Okay. But, uh, and then some of them was hard to let go. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, but, um, we may have lost uh, Sassy Huey and, uh, um, Dino. I like, uh, I like what he, I do like, I'd love Huey's name. That fits him to a T. Yeah. But to <laughs> me, it looks like he's got some Akbosh in there. Um, he definitely that, that, is. which explains the quietness yeah and he is more laid back and just as a breed they are but not all of them obviously yeah he his body looks very stocky all the way through now that he's a proper weight but my yeah. goodness oh yeah i think he's about two or three pounds over him so yeah. we call so that he, winter weight right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, mm -hmm. just the, the um, it is wild the transformation that each right. of those three drop my mic somehow. Okay. <laughs> um, while we're waiting on Bradford, let's talk about something. Okay. Oh, I didn't write one of them down, did I? Why would I we was going to say worry? again, Steve? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say again how appreciative we are of the Texas Fosters. They do oh, yeah. such an amazing job. Uh, he just job sent me a message. Those dogs. They're having internet issues because the clouds came up. Yeah. He must have satellite. So he may not be back. But that's okay. I think we got a good look at them, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, right. and Ju Julie was just talking about um, how – incredibly grateful we are for texas fosters yes well personally i'm grateful for any foster because that's another dog that well made it texas is bad down there isn't it there's a lot of them yeah. and and i'll tell you bradford uh he's uh stepping right up to the plate isn't he yeah <laughs> but that's what gprs fosters yeah. do isn't it yeah for sure now, um, especially for our first this is something foster. we can talk about. I haven't gotten one of these points cleared with uh, leadership yet, and I don't want to really talk about that yet. But uh, if you folks want to have uh, our viewers, if you want something, what we we're going to start doing talking points when we run low on dogs, and we don't expect technical issues. But hey, Murphy's Law. But um, if you got something you want us to talk about and discuss uh we will re what parts we don't know we will research it and we'll be happy to do that for you folks and just let us know right yep okay now um um so crates everybody um has different views on crates right and um here's my view if you don't believe in a crate some and it's no problem not believing in a crate that's okay there's no no judgment here but what happens if uh your dog unexpected you has an unexpected surgery and then he's ordered to crate rest trust me if he's never been in a crate then is not the time to start just because you crate train them doesn't mean they have to live in them okay i've got i've got three crates set up three big footprints or 54 inch crates because well our breed is big and um, the doors never shut and they go in and out as they please. That way, if we do ever have to shut the door, they're good. And every dog is different on how to achieve that. Okay. Um, we have some pretty standard ways that works with many dogs. And then you've got some dogs that, well, was shown a different reason for a crate and they didn't like it. And um, so Typically, anytime your dog comes to you, something good happens. Anytime it goes in the crate, something good happens. So basically, anytime, always something good happens for the dog. And uh, you'd be surprised how much happier of a life you can have in a quieter house maybe sometimes. 
And then one of the points we will bring up here one of these days, but we're going to make it a little bit shorter show this week. Um, unless my two co-hosts here, see, I don't make those sole decisions here. Um, and I promise not to get myself beat up by girls anymore, too. But uh, one of our talking points is going to be excessive barking in the future. Hopefully you guys will, will um, be here for that because, yeah, the peers are barkers. You can't train barking out of a peer. That's their first line of defense, all right? And I and people that know the breed, trainers that know the breed, they're not even going to try. Um, and then they can hear a fly fart a box away, and, <laughs> but they can't hear you call them to dinner three feet away. I get that, but uh, um, different reasons. But excessive barking, we can address. And... Um, and usually it's not that difficult. It depends on the why. Always remember, behavior always has a why to it. Why did they do that? Why are they doing that? And um, that's the first thing you should think about. What made the dog think they had to do that? And you never know. You might see what it, what it was. Um, and um, then one of these days we're going to cover um, muzzle training. All right. You ever take your dog to the vet and and everything's going great. And first time you come to the vet, you get oh, close to those doors and he hits the brakes. And that's that. Your 140 pound Great Pyrenees ain't going nowhere. Well, I've been there. I don't know about you guys. Um, so that's because he's scared. So we get him into the vet. And now he's all teeth and slobber at the vet. <coughs> vet says we got to put a muzzle on him. I don't know about you people, but I don't want a stranger being the first person to put a muzzle on my dog. Okay. And we have some really awesome uh, uh, videos on three part video. Roman did a three part series on muzzle training, start beginning with the desensitization. We put your treat in your hand, get him used to his nose going through the basket. And, and basket muzzles are what I prefer because they can drink, they can eat treats, and the most important part, they can still express themselves. All right. And uh, you want them to be able to express themselves. You know? That way, if they take the muzzle off, they can still express themselves without eating. All right. So, so muzzle training, uh, I always believe in that too. Now, a lot of you have dogs that, well, they're good. And that, that's right, but some of the cattle that aren't so good because they get scared at the vet. Yeah. We don't know their past. You could yeah. be triggering a trauma. So now we I did have a, a dog one time that took to the vet. And I mean, the dog was afraid of the car, afraid of me, afraid of the house, afraid of everything, afraid of the cat, afraid of anything that made noise. Got to that vet. And boy, that was one happy camper. So a we call it, we still call those trauma triggers because the trauma doesn't have to be bad. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. The definition is wrong, but it can be a good memory that it triggers too. Never forget that. And um, it's, that one kind of makes you smile, but you got to understand there could be something else there with it, but, but we're not here for a behavior lesson today. And somebody please bail me out of this because people are fleeing the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, just to, to revisit just to the crate issue, um, you know, when I got my first dog as an adult, I didn't know anything about crates. And so I think using one with her as a puppy would have been really helpful. I think GPRS, you know, as a foster for GPRS, they really helped me understand all like how to start crate training, but the benefits of it. And as a foster, you know, that's something that is part of my responsibility of helping the dog acclimate to the crate if they're not already there. Um, and if, you know, when we have potential adopters, we as a fosters try to figure out, um, are they afraid of the crate? Do they find it as their comfort zone? Um, and if it's if it's somewhere in between, we as fosters help them acclimate to the crate and get used to it. Um, the little, the just a temporary foster I had for a few days, I had the crate open like you do. I just had the crate open with nice comfy bed in there and left the door open. I did crate her at night. Oh, Velma's so cute. 
Um, I did crate the dog at night and then just during the day I left the door open and she, because this was a new environment for her, um, she would self-select to go in there and take naps and it was a really safe, um, secure place for her to be. And so that's, you know, being a being a volunteer for this rescue, I have received so much education, um, and and I have become such a better pet parent and pet foster parent. Um, so I appreciate how much the the rescue and the other volunteers invest in one another. Um, but you know the the crate is such a useful tool when you're introducing a new dog into your home when you already have dogs. It can be such a great safe transition space as you're kind of rotating the dog through before they get to know one another, especially when you have a house full of adult dogs. Um, or and you, it's their territory. Yeah. Yeah. So you always want dogs to have a good mm -hmm. first impression of, of everybody that kind of gets you started on the right foot. Okay. Then just like Sydney said, the crate, now they can get to know each other and everybody's safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah, that first impression, uh, we, we, we don't want that to be a bad one because now everybody's on alert. Yeah. All right. And um, so, and always, you know, if you're introducing new dogs, let, let's not let them go nose to nose. Uh, let's, they want to sniff butts. Okay. And I, and I, they do want to sniff butts because butts don't bite. And that's Roman's words, but I like them too. Yeah, but because uh, when they're nose to nose, you're that's an altercation just waiting to happen. Just always remember that. And um, but yeah, the uh, guardian breeds are are unique, aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, I have actually heard vets say, "Oh, these rescues don't know what they're talking about." Wait a minute, <laughs> this is the only breed they deal with. And um, well. You know, sorry about your luck, Mr. Vet. I, uh, my vet said that one time, my own vet, and um, the one we use now. Oh, he's definitely changed his mind because collectively nobody knows more about this breed than the rescues. Everybody brings their information in. And the director of this rescue is a walking encyclopedia amongst yeah. others. Okay. <laughs> She's very sharp. And, um, and, when she usually starts saying something on just about any subject, when it has to do with the dogs, the whole room goes quiet because she's very sharp. Okay. Hope she's not watching because she's probably going to beat me up <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and don't get her mad either. Um, okay. I'm rambling now. <laughs> Boy, that's a beautiful dog. I didn't, uh, get time. I was scrambling getting, uh, um, Huey and Bluey and Odino and Sassy. Uh, that's an interesting way they spell Sassy, huh? S A S I. But I didn't get a banner up for Velma. If she, but, and she, but she has, does have a web page, right, Julie? Yeah. Yep. Okay. She does. He has a web page, and we've uh, we're grateful to the uh, people that do uh, that monitor that and add pictures and videos for us and. Uh, update bios because that helps these dogs to get uh, um, to get adopted. You know, okay. um, you know, as fosters, we take a million pictures of our puppy and dogs, and so yeah. uh, I think uh, good bios and good pictures are super important to uh, people that go to the web page to look at your dogs to to adopt. Yeah, and how many dogs? Uh, any idea how many are in rescue right now? I don't know. Um, Lena, she might know. We have over a hundred. Okay. Oh, I would say more. I, I think you always have over a hundred. Yeah. They may not all be listed, um, but yeah, I think um, earlier we had maybe 140. Um, wow. I don't know. I don't know that we have quite that many right now. I think we actually dipped a little bit. Um, but it's it's well, over that's a plus, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, that's a good thing. Okay, all right. But your goal is to eventually work to yourself out of the season. job, right? Yeah. Right. Sorry, Julie, I it's walked to be on you puppy you're season. Really no. I, no, I said uh, it's getting to be puppy season. So unfortunately, we're starting to see 
a lot of puppies come in, a lot of pregnant uh, females at the shelters that need our help. And I think wow. even one this week had nine peers that uh, showed up that are there right now that we're trying to find fosters for. So, wow. so fostering Never. is extremely important. Donors are extremely important. Uh, uh, fosters make everything uh, on on that level happen, but the donors make it all possible, and everybody is appreciated in rescues. And uh, uh, people don't realize what goes on behind the scenes. I didn't. Uh, okay, Rena answered. She said maybe 120. And but I, that number goes up. That number fluctuates so quickly, and and that's with any rescue. I don't think any rescue's got that many. Um, uh, but you never know. They could. Lab rescues are getting swamped too, I hear. Um, it's a bad everywhere. So let's commit to the dogs. There's plenty of help out there. And um, and if you have a Shih Tzu and you're stuck, call a Shih Tzu Rescue. They can point you in the right direction if you're having behavior issues. Hopefully, you don't have behavior issues with your Shih Tzu. Just so that was just an example. I didn't want to use a pug. <laughs> um, that's it. Let's wrap the show up. What do you think? Yep. I didn't. I was working hard on our new ten-minute intro and swapping the videos around. I fixed the um, the one at headquarters that video, and uh, but I didn't get it finished. I was going to add it to the ten-minute timer, and I got to get with one of you or Rena, find out. <laughs> That's me, Steve. I got you covered. I got you muted. So we don't have uh, the entire audience um, or the all the viewership uh, fighting their dogs off now. <laughs> Did you hear what uh, Bradford said when I with that picture? Yes. Okay. Um, that's um, a, a magic trick on Dino's part because that's Huey, Dino, and Dino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I called him to the window because I needed a thumbnail, all right? <laughs> I told him I'd fix it uh, when, I, when we get done. All right, everybody. Next week, um, uh, we're working on um, uh, some dogs. I can't remember. I just had a brain, a brain fart just now. Um, uh, we're working on who does uh, Christine have um, <coughs> down there by headquarters? Um, starts with an M. Um, I just talked to her. We're going to. We're going to try to get some dogs on here, and <clears throat> we always do. But we have a common issue with a lot of people, and I don't blame them. It's the wrong side of the camera for them, okay? My response to that is we don't want to see them. We want to see the dogs, and ho hopefully everybody agrees with me. Yes, uh, that is Mikhail. Anybody ever hear him up here? No. Yeah, Not Mikhail. Yet. He's new. He's new. Great. Yeah. He sounded great. Um, and boy, and we're going to try to get Julio back on since uh, Daisy got adopted. Uh, um, I got a, I got an email back uh, that email I sent, put everybody on. I got it back and I'm going to read it as soon as we get off the show. So I'm going to shut up now because I got an incentive. And um, well, oh, thank you Julie, for bringing Velma on. Yes, absolutely. Oh, she's muted. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. I did right. it again. We're still at uh, the four o'clock uh, Amazon Bark Fest. So <laughs> mute me. Thanks for having me, you guys. Letting us. Well, you, this is an impromptu. She's you a cutie. you came, came up on your day <laughs> off. Thank you. You guys do a lot of good That's work. Okay. We are watching anyway. And you make Thank it to you. where I'm not such a dork. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Next week, uh, um, we're having a good show. So hang on. I got to get to the timer here. There, I mean, to the countdown or the exit. Bye, everybody. <laughs>